Hello, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use VC Package to handle your C++ dependencies. And um, what is VC Package and what does it do? Well, VC Package is what we call a package manager for C++. And if you don't know what that is, it is essentially a tool that will include BitPy dependencies in your C++ project. So if you've been using things like OpenSSL, Qt, Boost, or any other BitPy dependency that may be pulled online from GitHub, and you've been doing it manually, this video is for you because this tool is gonna to save you a lot of time. So I wrote this article about a year ago or so where I compared VC Package and Conan, which are the two most popular uh, C++ package managers. And we basically looked at pros and cons of each of these two tools. And we figured out that you know, you know, in some cases, VC Package can be good for you, for your project. And in some cases, Conan uh, can be good for your project as well. It depends on what you want to do. But this is actually quite old now. And some of the problems that I mentioned with VC Package were actually either fixed or implemented as the new features uh, came about in their Git repository. So this is what I want to talk about today. I want to teach you how to install VC Package, how to write a manifest file, and how to integrate it with your CMake project. So let's get into it. So the very first thing that we're going to do today is to actually install VC package. All you have to do is to find the uh, VC package Git repository and it's on GitHub. I will leave the link down in the description. And in fact, it might be a link to my uh, website. And in that blog article, you'll find all this information here uh, with all the code that we're going to write and everything else. So just check it out, please. You're going to pull it. In other words, you're going to clone that repository and then you're going to follow the steps right here on the getting started guide. And it's actually very simple. I mean, you can obviously read this by yourself, uh, but in my particular case here, I've already pulled VC package here. And all you have to do after that is to run the uh, bootstrap script, which in my case, because I'm on uh, Windows right now, it's the uh, bootstrap dash VC package dot bat. And if you're on shell or if you're on Linux, for example, you're going to run the shell script. And it's basically the same thing. It's going to run the installation, the configuration step of VC package, and it's also going to compile this VC package.exe tool, as you can see here. And if you've got any problems installing it, post down a comment there and I'll try to help you. But it should be fairly straightforward. And once you've got the VC package.exe or simply a VC package in Windows, in Linux, sorry, and once you've got that executable up and running, that means you've got it installed in your machine. And do note that this is not really a system installation. In other words, you haven't actually installed VC package uh, system wide. So you can't really call it from another terminal or another directory. So for example, if I call it here, it's simply not going to work. So just bear in mind that you need to know this particular directory where you installed VC package and where the uh, VC package.exe tool is located uh, because we're going to need it later on. And the next thing that we're going to do once we install VC package is to actually, you know, go into our project. In my case here, I've got a very simple uh, C++ project where I've got a very sort of simple uh, main.cpp file and that has a, a hello world kind of uh, printout here. And I've also got a CMake lists which essentially create an executable called VC package test and that comprises of the main.cpp file. And there's not much more to it than, than this right now. What I do have uh, here is that I want to basically uh, be able to include a library called FMT into my C++ project. And this is going to be done, uh, obviously, with VC package, because VC package manages third party dependencies for you, you should be able to pull them, it should be able to build them, and it should be able to provide you uh, integration with CMake. So this is what we're going to do. So as you can see, at the very top, I've got include FMT format. And this library is a very sort of uh, widely popular library for C++ that does sort of uh, C style formatting uh, in C++ and a very nice sort of API. And to achieve that with VC package, you're going to have to create a manifest file. And manifest file is very similar to a Conan file, if you know what Conan does. It basically declares the dependencies of your project, as well as some information about your project, such as the project name, the version of your project, and so on and so forth. But very specifically, we're going to create that JSON file, which is called VC package.json. And because I don't know off the top of my head here, I'm actually going to use uh, the VC package example from this particular link here, which is the documentation of VC package. And I'm just going to copy and paste it right here. And conveniently, I didn't actually plan for this, but they also by default include on the example here, 
the FMT library. And let me just take you through some of these properties that we're going to be modifying in your VC package.json, just so you know what to do in your own particular project. So the name property here on the JSON file is simply your project name. And in this particular case, I'm just going to call it anything VC package, I think it's score test. And the version has to be the version of your particular package. And this can be anything again, as long as you're, you know, if you're, if you're pushing it to the VC package directory as a port, it's what we call uh, these kind of uh, packages here in VC package. And you probably need to do it, you know, properly in a Semver version. And yeah, but in this particular case, it doesn't really matter much. I'm just going to say it's the version 0.0.0 .0 .0 of my project. And then we have an array called dependencies. And this dependencies array can contain either strings or objects uh, where each of these objects uh, declares a name of a dependency a version and and I believe it has a few more properties which we're not going to go through today but you can add them in this object here as well so, so let's just remove this zlib because we don't actually need it for this particular project I'm not using zlib uh, to compress anything and I'm going to leave the uh, fmt package here because we want vc package to basically pull that and build it with my uh, source code and as you can also tell there is a version more than or equals to property here and this will tell vc package the minimum version that you should install for this particular version in your project. And this is, you know, perhaps a little bit quite tricky as to, you know, understanding how this works because essentially, because you're essentially saying, I want version at least 7.1. But what does that mean? Well, I, I believe that it means a VC package can actually pick, for example, 7.2, uh, given that all your other dependencies also depend on the same version of this package here. So we'll try to resolve the dependencies, uh, which essentially means you might not pick exactly the version that you want here. And there is a, a way of do of picking exactly the version that you want, and we'll show that in a bit. But this this constraint here basically means that you might pick a version above that, uh, so that your other packages or your other third party dependencies are also built properly, and your build is going to succeed. So just bear that in mind. That's what this version more than or equals to actually means. And the built-in baseline is also something that you need to include in this. And this is basically a snap a snapshot commit. Uh, in other words, it's basically a hash of a commit in the VC package repository. And this commit will serve as, you know, the minimum versions for all of the packages that you can include in your VC package test. And this is actually something quite difficult to understand or to grasp if you're looking at this for the first time. So I did find this very useful article by Microsoft where it kind of explains exactly what built-in baseline means, what a constraint, in other words, the version more than or equals to means and also the override, which we'll touch in a bit. So basically a baseline is obviously a commit in time in the VC package directory, and that commit will have a minimum version for all of the available ports in C package. So if you're looking to use, for example, 7.1, you need to find a commit where that baseline included 7.1 as the version of FMT. And I know this is quite difficult. In fact, I haven't really found a reliable way of uh, pinpointing the baseline commit so you can ex see exactly which commit you need for a particular version of a library. But the only way I found is to go back in history in the VC package repository and find out the versions baseline.json. And then basically you just go back in time until you find a particular library here, in my case, FMT. And you go to the commit where your version is is, is mentioned here. I believe this is probably the, the only way I found uh, of doing this right now. So it's not very flexible and it's quite, you know, beginner unfriendly, put it that way. This is one of the things I don't like at the moment about VC package. And you can see that, you know, if you're on the master version right now, so if you're on the top version or the most updated version of VC package, you're not going to be able to include FMT uh, versions less than 9.1.0. It's just not going to work. So what do we do? And we will see that in a second. Uh, basically, you know, as a spoiler, we're going to use overrides, uh, which kind of, um, ignores the baseline and it, you can go back in time and, and specify exactly a particular version of a library that you want to use. So I'm going to, you know, stop talking about versions. It is quite complicated in VC package, but for the most part, if you have a very simple project where you just want to use the latest versions of a particular port or a particular third party dependency, writing the very basic VC package manifest file is going to work for you as long as you pick versions that are within the baseline and you know just one more thing before we move on you can find all the available uh, versions for all the available ports of vc package by looking at the website for vc package so it's vcpackage.aio and you can click on browse packages and you can type in here anything for example if you want to include qt in your project 
you'll be able to type QT and it will give you the name that you want to include right here and the name. So in this particular case, if I want QT version 6.3.2, I simply have to put QT here and the uh, built-in baseline, uh, I would probably leave it as the most recent commit in the VC package repository uh, because this is what shows up in here. So right. So what, once we have this very basic manifest file, what do we do? How do we get VC package to, you know, pull the dependency, pull the, pull the source code for it, uh, build it, and then include it in our CMake? And that's actually quite, quite simple. So essentially, if you're using CMake on the command line, uh, on your configure step, you know, when you say, you know, CMake, and then you point to the directory where your CMake list, your main CMake list is, you're also going to pass in the CMake toolchain file variable, and you're going to set that to the toolchain file that's provided by the CMake installation. And I'll show you what that is in a little bit. But essentially, what you're going to do here is pass in, you know, the CMake toolchain file and then point it to, you know, the path of the uh, this this particular toolchain called vcpackage.cmake. Now, this is provided by VC package, and I believe we can actually find it in this particular location. Let's find it now. So once you reach your VC package root directory where you install, then you, you can see the VC package.exe. You're going to go into the uh, script, I believe it is, and then build systems. As you can see, I've done this command before. And right here, this is the, the path you need because this is where the VC package.cmake file is located. So basically, I'm just going to copy and paste that file right here. And I'm going to pass into my CMake lists in the other terminal and obviously attach that vc package.cmake here and because i'm on windows i've got backwards slashes here to uh, specify the directories but if you're on linux you just put forward slashes and you know it should work or just use the pwd command to, to get the exact directory that you need so if you're using cmake on the command line uh, once you hit enter vc package is going to start you know installing things given you found the file just make sure this particular uh, path here is absolutely correct otherwise it's not going to work uh, but if you're on something like, you know, Visual Studio Code, you can actually, in this particular case, by typing uh, cmake.configure.args, I can pass in exactly that cmake configure variable here, cmake toolchain file. And, you know, I did that by going into the settings.json. And this, if you just type in settings.json, uh, open the workspace settings on Visual Studio Code, you should see something like this. And all you have to do is you now add this line here in the JSON. And if you're on Windows, again, make sure that you escape the backward slashes by doing a double backward slash. Uh, obviously, you're not going to need this on Linux, so don't worry about it. But yeah, and essentially, once you do that, you should now be able to configure the CMake project. Let's, you know, cache and reconfigure. And there's actually a little error here. And I can see exactly what the error is, is because I passed the CMake toolchain file a little bit, you know, weird. It should have been and equals there. And if we save that and then delete and reconfigure, you can see that now, you know, VC package is actually running because it says it here, it's running VC package. And it's telling me that, you know, there was an error in my VC package build. And let's see what that is. It must be low the name, it must be okay. So probably something in the VC package.json. I know exactly what it is, is the name here because it told me. And basically we can't have underscores, which I didn't know. So let's let's run this without underscores and see, you know, where it takes us. <laughs> And this is another point that I wanted to bring as well here. So I'm, I'm including version 7.1.3, but as we've seen, this particular baseline that I've got in, in set in here in my built-in baseline doesn't have that version, it seems here. And in fact, you know, if you go back to your VC package directory and do a git log and you take the most recent commit and set it as the base-in, the uh, built-in baseline, it's, it's even worse because it's not going to have that version. So you can see here that 9.1.0 is the, uh, you know, the minimum version that you can include of FMT. So how do we solve this? Well, this is actually quite easy. So for example, you know, I'm on version 9.1, but if I wanted to include 6.0.0, I have to override the ba built-in baseline here. And how do we do that? We do that with an overrides array here. you would basically add this overrides array here and whatever dependencies in this overrides array and the version of it, VC package is going to take that version exactly. 
So you can see here it's installing and it's actually building uh, FMT 6.0.0 here because of this overrides. So whatever is in the overrides, VC package is going to take that version exactly. But just bear in mind that whatever version you're going to choose here, and if it's not, you know, under your built-in baseline, it may not work with the other transient dependencies that you have, such as, you know, if you've got some dependency that also depends on FMT. Uh, it might not build correctly because you're going to be overriding the version of FMT sort of everywhere. And the only thing you're guaranteed with VC package is that whatever, you know, ports you're using for the third party dependencies, as long as they're in the same built-in baseline, they should, you know, generally work. And that's the, the kind of consensus I get online. So, you know, that, that is it. I mean, it should have built now. Just, so just before we go to the last step, uh, just do note that, you know, once VC package does build your dependency, it also gives you a nice little uh, guide here on how to basically include that into your CMake project. In my case, it says, you know, to include FMT in my project, I have to include the line find package FMT and also target to, uh, target link libraries, which will link my uh, executables or whatever to the FMT targets provided. Uh, I already kind of did that work before. So I've got, you know, the find package FMT here. And I said that that's required. In other words, if it doesn't find it, it's going to fail. And also we're in my VC package underscore test executable. I'm basically linking that to FMT colon colon FMT. And this is, you know, all the work that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to obviously install VC package. You're going to write a VC package dot JSON with all the dependencies that you need. And again, try to stick to the versions in the baseline. If you can, you're basically guaranteed that all the ports should, you know, in essence, work with each other as long as it's in the same baseline. Uh, but if you really need to override a version, uh, you're going to, you know, have to write an override. And this is it, basically. I mean, it should, my project, as you can see, it will build now. It should just build fine. And yeah, I mean, use VC package. Uh, you can also use a different one called Conan if you want. It does save a lot of time when including third party dependencies. I can't say this enough. I know there's a lot of people that are a bit skeptical, but trust me, it's going to save you a lot of time if you're using a package dependency like VC package in your project. And I'm going to leave it here. I mean, this is a very sort of basic tutorial on how to use uh, this particular tool. Uh, if you want more information, do check out the link below. I will post all of the information and maybe a little bit more as well. So check it out. Uh, subscribe to the channel, post any comments if you've got any questions or suggestions, and that's it. Bye-bye.